Welcome to Mimi's Sketchbook. Today we're going to be painting this robin's nest with the distinctive blue eggs. And these are the supplies that you're going to need for this painting. First of all, you'll need some really good watercolor paper and I'm using the Canson 140 pound watercolor paper. Use good paper. It costs more, but it's worth it. It's worth it for beginners. It's worth it because it helps you to make adjustments and corrections to your pa painting easily. I'm also using a Koi watercolor field set. And this has a nice little compact set that has 48 different colors to use. And I'll be using these turquoise and indigo and a lot of these warm browns. And it's just a terrific set. I'm also using two paint brushes. One is a round watercolor and another a flat. A sketching pencil, a kneaded eraser, and some white opaque ink. And all of these, you can find a link to them, all of these right here and below the video. Now before I actually get to the painting, I want to understand how the light and dark uh, highlight and shadows work on this painting. So I'm going to do a couple of quick little sketches first to think about the light and how that is going to affect my painting. Now I need dark areas within the nest and especially you can see around the outside of the eggs. It's really important to have those look looking like they're nestled down inside the nest if I have a nice shadow around them. Now the nest is Basically, I'm going to sketch it out as a cylinder, and it's wider on the top, narrower on the bottom, and it's a very shallow cylinder. I know it's this, I know my shape is right if I put a center line down it, it helps me see that the top and the bottom are equal and that it's wider than it is higher. And I can see that when I place them in the nest, looking across the top of the nest at an angle, that I don't see all the eggs. Some of them are hidden under that front lip of the nest. So you want to think about the placement of your eggs and what you can see when we actually build this nest on our painting. So once again, I'm thinking about highlights and shadows and where they're located on the eggs and in the nest. There's also a cast shadow where the nest is sitting, so that has to be considered. Now we also have our drawing a, an egg, and I want to think about that shape. And an egg, or this ellipse egg shape, is a little pointed on one end, a little rounder on the other, and I want to think about how it catches the light and how it catches the shadow to create this round, the sense of roundness and that it is sitting on a surface. And I'm not pressing hard on my pencil, I'm very, adding very, very light layers of value to it to get it correct. Okay, so now we are ready to paint. I've got my water, my mixing dish, my paints, my paper, everything set up. So it's start time to start with a light sketch. And I'm placing this sort of at the top in the corner to kind of show 
an informal arrangement, like I'm looking at it, um, kind of peeking into the tree to look at it, and I wanted to give it a sense of that it's um, tucked, kind of hidden in the branches of the tree. Now, one of the hardest parts of this drawing is getting the shape of the eggs correct. So I really take my time and I hold the paper up so I can look at it straight on. If I leave it laying down on the paper, on the table, it's hard to see if I'm correct. Now something I'm doing is I'm putting a center line down it to see if my sides are symmetrical. Just once turning it towards you and putting a center line in there helps you to see if your eggs are drawn correctly. So take a second, if you're having, don't think your eggs are looking right, put a center line down and look to see if they are symmetrical that way. Okay, it's time to paint. And I am going to start with one of the warm browns, and this is an umber. And I'm going to put a base coat of umber in first to outline the eggs and also to just put a base coat of paint on. And I'm not worried about, at this point, um, creating little, um, suggestions of twigs or grasses. I'm just getting this color in here. And this is the background color. Take your time going around the eggs. Turn your paper so you can work just with the tip of your brush pointing towards the egg. Don't try to paint over the egg uh, with detail, like right here, that's kind of painting over it. I wouldn't do that if I was painting detail. I would turn it and so I could, the point of the brush could just touch the outside of the egg. And this would be the side of the nest and the darkest point is going to be underneath where it is kind of set on those uh, layers of leaves and branches. And I'm just really quickly indicating some branches and it pretty much has to be located in a crook of a branch so that the Nest can be woven around that crook. So now I'm going to switch over to a wide flat brush so I can start to paint in the atmosphere around it. I'm using a diluted indigo, a lot of water, just a little bit of paint to suggest some sky. And I'm not worried about painting all the sky, I'm just doing a little bit of sky in there. <clears throat> now I'm going and putting in some darker color. There's a lot of leaves and branches and twigs and all kinds of things around the base of that nest and I want to get a foundation in there for where it's setting. And I'm just suggesting leaves. And I'm going to use a few colors, muted colors in here, just to suggest that there is some growth there. The dark, do you see how the dark really 
lifts up the nest, don't be afraid of it, just give it a try. And just a few little side strokes on the brush suggest leaves. So one of the reasons why you want a good quality paper is because if I'm putting a lot of water on there. I am blending the, those colors out and there's a lot of water sitting there. So I don't want my paper to warp. I want it to hold up to this water. I'm using the side of the brush to suggest some branches. Now I'm going to start with a very light turquoise. Paint in one egg at a time and then use some indigo while the light color is um, still wet. Put some indigo in there and let that be the shadow. So I washed my brush out and I'm just kind of blending the indigo into the lighter color. I wiped off my brush on the paper towel. Do you see how I can lift the paint right off of there to create the highlight? So it's just by tapping my, washing my brush out, tapping it onto the paper towel that I can lift it. You have to have good paper to do that. Okay, while that egg dries, I'm starting to build up that darkness. Remember the sketch I did ahead of time? And look at the eggs there in the top right corner. See how black it is right around the eggs? I'm not actually using black, but I'm going to build up dark values. These are, this has less um, water in it, so the values are darker. And I'm letting my brush strokes show as I work around the nest. And um, I am also want to build up that value around the eggs so the eggs really pop out. So little by little, go in there, let the stroke show to give that feeling of the grasses that are so carefully woven into this protective nest and you can see I need it really dark right down in the bottom so I've got to work at that to get it darker right at the base of those eggs. Now I'm waiting for the first egg to dry before I go in and I paint the other eggs because you I don't want my eggs colors to run into each other so we just have to be a little patient and work other parts of the watercolor before I can go in there and work the other eggs. But I'm getting that really dark, dark interior painted. Adding a few little details to some twigs. Turn the paper when you have to. Let, you don't try to put all the information and in. leave something to the imagination. And now I'll work on my other eggs, the same as I did before. A coating of light, and while it's still wet, I'm going to go in with the darker indigo, which is a great shadow color. And 
after I have it in, wash my brush out, dry it a bit, and blend it. I went back into the other egg because it got a little bit dark. I ha I'm going to have to lighten it up. Had a little bit too much uh, indigo on there, so I can adjust it. I'm reactivating it with some water, and I'm going to lift the paint right here. I'm lifting the paint off with a clean, dry brush to help brighten it up. And I want to work on one egg at a time while the whole area of the egg is wet. And so it will all blend together without any brush marks. I have to work a little bit harder at this, but that's okay. Carefully go in here and work on this last egg. trying not to touch that other egg there because I think it's still wet. A little wet, but I have to be very careful not to touch it. To work a little bit at a time. I also want to get a dark shadow between the eggs. If you look up at the right hand corner again, you can see the eggs do have um, very deep value between them, so I have to carefully work on that. I don't want it too thick, I don't want it too thin. I don't want it to run into each other. Just take your time, work at it, add a little, subtract a little if you have to. So I'm re-wetting this and washing my brush out drying it, and then lifting color. Lifting the color to create the highlight. Needed a little more work, so that's okay. I can rework this paper. So building up a little bit more, I'm using a really dark color here to create more illusion of sticks and that darkness, you really need it dark in there. Those eggs are down in a hollow. Little by little, build it up with little strokes. And I'm trying to make it so that I see, it's not like painting black on black, but I can see each of the strokes that I'm putting in. I'm using contrast of one color on top of another color, building up till I get darker and darker. Okay, now I'm going around the outside edge, breaking it up a little bit with some more creative or loose sticks, just wiggles and sketching along the outside, just with a real loose hand. And getting some of that uh, outer edge, that just real nice um, outer edge there to it. Go back inside. Fix those eggs a little bit more, get that corrected. I couldn't see, you can't see things when it's lying down. Your painting's distorted. It's only when you lift it up and look at it can you see what a painting really looks like. It's totally distorted when you, it's laying down. So pick it up often, look at it from a distance. until you get it right. Some things you just can't see when you're looking across.
crossed it. So you have to pick it up and hold it directly up in front of your face. So you can look at it in the right perspective. We miss a lot with it just lying down and looking at it close up. Close up isn't the best. It's you have to hold it straight up across from you so you see it correctly. And more details. Take your time. Get those eggs nestled in that nest. Okay, now we are going to get to the fun part. And we're going to put on this upper top edge, um, loosely woven twigs. And what I've done is taken my white opaque ink and I've added a bit of color to it, the watercolor I'm using. So I'm not diluting it. I don't really want to dilute it because I want it to be uh, opaque and stand on top of the darker colors. But I'm adding some uh, pigment to it and light and then I'd make it a little darker, maybe a little warmer and real loose strokes. And then I change the color again, maybe a little lighter. And don't be afraid to remember how those eggs were setting down in the nest. Well, this is what happens. A few of the little branches or twigs go right in front of the eggs. Hide it a little bit. Okay, now I'm going back and adding darker, like weaving darker twigs into it. Going outside the nest, they kind of are up and around. Little stragglers hanging out there. And then a few more lighter ones again. Building up. lighter as I get to the very end. The very lightest ones are the very last strokes we're going to use. Dark again. And light again. A few details. And that's it. So I hope you enjoyed painting this with me. Give it a try. And thank you for joining me at Mimi Sketchbook. And if you like this video, please subscribe. And um, you'll receive a notification of my next video. And if you want to buy any of these supplies, there is a link right here at the top and a list of supplies below. So once again, thanks for joining me at Mimi Sketchbook.